السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters I want to tell you something interesting كما تحيون تموتون وكما تموتون تحشرون The way you led your life is the way you will die. And the way you died is the way you will be resurrected. So if you are not interested in working on your bad habit, you will die in the midst of that bad habit. And when you die in the midst of that bad habit, you are resurrected with the last thing you did. When a man passed away in ihram, the Prophet ﷺ said to his companions, leave him in this state and in this condition, let him be buried like this. فَإِنَّهُ يُحْشَرُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ مُلَبِّيَا he will be resurrected on the day of judgment saying, Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik. Imagine what a death. What a death. You died in a good condition, in a haram. The Prophet ﷺ says, Innahu yuhsharu yawma al-qiyamati mulabbiyan. This man is going to be resurrected on the day of judgment in this condition while saying, I am at your service, O Allah. I am at your service, O Allah. Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik. Imagine. What a blessed death. You're standing in front of Allah. Your hisab is still about to come and you're busy saying, Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik. You are the only one who can say that because you died in the condition. What if you died in another condition? With a bottle, with a throttle. What if you died in another condition? Sitting in front of your phone, all those haram things, nudes. People have a bad habit, a very, very bad habit that needs to be spoken about. More and more people are asking me these questions and not just me, a lot of the ulama, we speak in our circles. People are becoming absurd. They are taking videos and pictures of themselves in the nude and posting them and sending them sometimes to their own spouses claiming it's okay. But your phone is hackable. I can hack it for you in three seconds. Any phone in this masjid, we can whack it in three seconds. We can get into it and take out whatever we want. It's so simple. You just need a little bit of that software and it's over. Aren't you worried? You know why you're worried? Because I told you I can do it. Imagine Rabbul Alameen. For Allah, you are not worried. For me, you're worried. Right? Look at how weak we are. I'm telling you there is software to knock anybody's phone and to get what you deleted and you deleted twice and thrice. We can de-encrypt everything in a few seconds for you. And I can show it to you. People are worried, right? There's, there is technology, by the way. I'm not telling a lie. There is technology to that degree. But we're not worried about Allah. But Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. All I'm saying is, just correct your way. You don't need it. Why did you need to video yourself and your own wife doing an intimate act for what? What was it necessary for? How many cases of people on porn sites themselves with their halal spouses, they made their own videos. Someone hacked into the system and found it and sold it and made millions of dollars because of you. You did something silly. It's unnecessary. It is unbefitting a true believer to take those type of videos and images, even if you are trying to justify, to say, you know what? But there was nothing haram happening. Hang on, you're a believer. You don't drop to that level. It's not necessary. It's not needed. You don't need to get a kick out of something of that nature. You get a kick out of turning towards Allah, doing things in a proper, noble way. Why am I saying this? Because sometimes we get used to these type of things. And... It becomes so bad that we become addicted. And like I said, you die in that condition. Imagine a person sitting with his phone doing haram things. Say for example, watching pornography because it's accessible everywhere. And people are justifying it. No, I only do this so that I can get a kick. It's my version of Viagra. What are you talking about? What type of nonsense is this? We are we're believers in Allah. If you need help, you need help. No problem. You can go and get medication. Don't deny that you need help. It's okay. Many people need help. But this is not the way to help yourself through haram. Dying in that condition, what will happen? The other day I was speaking in the UK at a convention that was entitled social media. And the whole convention, few days, almost a week was all about social media and its use. Because you know we are now living in the age of social media. And you know, one of the interesting factors is when we read the Quran, Allah doesn't leave out anything. 
You know that. Allah doesn't leave out anything. And Allah says that on the day of judgment, He's just going to give you your own book. He will give you your book of deeds that you are writing right now. Right now we are alive and breathing. When you're alive and breathing, what are you doing? You are writing your book. When you are writing your book, let me explain something to you. You can change and delete and add and subtract because Allah's taught us tawbah. The minute I say, oh Allah, forgive me. I was wrong. What I did was wrong. I don't want to do it again and you help me and I regret it. Allah says, you know what? Your sin is wiped out. Immediately shaitan comes to you and says, no, 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 no. Your sin is not wiped out. It is a bit too big. That's another problem. Shaitan made you commit the sin. When you turn back to Allah and Allah forgave you, he starts making you doubt the mercy of Allah, which is a bigger sin than the initial sin because now you're doubting the quality of Allah and one of his names. So what happens? Allah Almighty will give you your own book. You can write it now, delete, add, subtract, whatever. Add good things and delete bad things. May Allah make it easy for me. When you're given your book, you will be able to see everything you did. You cannot deny anything because it's there, your deeds. Imagine someone showing you CCTV of you and you know you did this. And they say, but why did you do this? You can't come and say, I'm not the one. Like they would normally say, this is doctored. It's not doctored. This is you. May Allah grant us forgiveness. And then Allah will say to you and I, I want you to judge for or against your own self. That's what Allah will say. Here's your deeds. You did them. Have a look at them. Go through them. And I want you to judge for your own self. Where do you think you deserve to go? Subhanallah. I want you all and myself also to think to ourselves for a moment. I know what I've done in my life. I've done so many things. I've even forgotten what I have done. If I tell you and you're about 50 years old that look, tell me what you've done in your life. You're going to say, you know what? I can't even remember. Astaghfiruka lima la a'lamuhu. Astaghfiruka lima la a'lamuhu. I seek your forgiveness, O oh Allah, for that which I don't even know that I committed in terms of sin. Subhanallah. Do you get that? So it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favor upon us that he allows us to chop and change and to say, Oh Allah, what I remember, I seek forgiveness of. What I don't remember, also I seek forgiveness of. But let me have a good book. When you give it to me, I need to have good deeds. I need to have good deeds that are bonus from you. When you seek forgiveness of Allah, Allah says all the bad, I convert it into good. Seek forgiveness. And when you seek forgiveness, have hope in the mercy of Allah. Learn to smile when you think of the mercy of Allah and learn to be concerned when you think of how bad you and I have fared in real life. We are weak. We are insan. One bonus I have and you have is that as believers, I don't think a single believer who says La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would ever sin in defiance of Allah they would only sin out of human weakness, not defying Allah. What's the meaning of defying Allah? Going to war with Allah. You say, you made this thing haram. I'm going to show you, I'll do it. What are you going to do? Astaghfirullah. A believer will never do that. Never ever. Am I right? If you are sinning, why are you sinning? It's human weakness, right? Isn't that a bonus? Which means... I still worship Allah alone. I consider what is haram as haram, what is halal as halal. There is a sign of qiyamah that people will start considering haram, halal and halal, haram. Sign of the hour. May Allah protect us from it.